Maybe it's a classic or maybe a flop Some of you have seen it and others have not So sit down and watch it, it'll make you feel glad Hey, have you seen this? Yes, Katie has seen that Hi, I'm Katie, and if I had a nickel for every time someone said to me Wait, you haven't seen this movie? Oh my god, you need to see this movie I'd be very rich so this is my podcast, where I finally watch those movies you all have told me I need to see, and I tell you what I think. All right, it's me with a special episode of Katie Hasn't... K Katie Has Seen This. This is a Katie Has Seen This episode, and it's going to be another, like, list of movies I have seen, but this time it's movies that have actually scared me. If you know me at all as a person, you know I love horror games, I love horror movies, horror content. It, it takes a lot now to actually scare me, but these eight movies with a couple honorable mentions have actually terrified me beyond all imagination at one point in time in my life. Though I wonder if I watch some of these now, like for the first time, if I would still be afraid of them and if those m scary moments would still get to me. But I looked up some clips while I was getting ready to do this episode and I'm just like, you know what? Some of this stuff holds, okay? So if you want to find out which eight movies have scared me in my lifetime and maybe you should watch and stick around, we're going to be talking about that today. Also, I try with these episodes to not put any spoilers in them because if you haven't seen this movie, these are recommendations I'm making to you. So I'm going to try really, really, really hard to not spoil anything. And just to get it out of the way, right out of the gate, Jaws is not on this list. If you listen to the episode, top five movies I've actually seen, Jaws, oh wait, that's not what it was. Top five, I've seen more than five movies. Okay, by now I feel like that should be canon, but top five movies I actually liked, Jaws was on that list and Jaws scares me to this day. I didn't include Jaws on this list because I'm like, it goes without saying that Jaws destroys my life daily up until this point, that irrational fear of sharks is still here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. So if you're ever curious, like, Katie, tell me the tale about why you're so afraid of sharks. Go listen to five movies I actually like. I dive into why Jaws has ruined my life, but also has enriched it. So that is just something that goes without saying on this list. Jaws is already included, but since I've already talked about it in that episode, I'm going to give you eight other movies that also somewhat destroyed my life for a short period of time after I saw it. These are in no particular order, but at some point in time, they scared the sh out of me. And I have, I'm just going to get this honorable mention right out of the way, but it also kind of doesn't count because I've never actually finished this movie. Before we dive into the actual list, there is a movie called The Fourth Kind. This lovely gem is from the year 2009 and it stars Mila Jovovich and some other folks that I'm not super familiar with. However, this movie ruined my life for about a week and I never finished it. So maybe this does kind of count, but I feel like I can't even give it a rating because I don't even really know what happens. It's about aliens or it's implied heavily that it's about aliens. I do not do well with alien movies or demon possession movies. If you want me to have trouble sleeping, just throw one of those two at me. This movie specifically stars Mila Jovovich and this and I don't use that term ever, rolls up at the beginning of the movie and goes, hi, I'm Mila Jovovich. And just so you know, Everything you're about to see is true. So, okay, first of all, Mila, you are in the fifth element. I trust you implicitly. I start this movie with Mark and we're watching it. We used to do this thing where we would inflate an air mattress and lay it on the ground in front of the TV so we could like watch TV in the living room on an air mattress. I know, super cool kid stuff. Here's what happens. We're watching this and it's kind of got like found footage inserted amongst other things. And you have this impression like, this is true? And this is, this is like a couple, this is more than a couple years ago. This was, I don't know, 10 years ago? Holy shit. Cell phones exist, yes. The internet exists, yes, but not in the ways that it does today. Like, I didn't have a smartphone that I could just whip out and be like, is this true? But here's the thing. This movie starts out with like this disclaimer about how it's true from the actress Mila Jovovich. It wasn't her playing a character. It was her saying, hi, I'm Mila Jovovich. This is real. 
So the movie starts, essentially the the loose plot, I have, obviously haven't watched the full film, is it says since the 1960s, a disproportionate number of population in and around Nome, Alaska have gone missing. And so essentially they peppered in little found footage things and said that those were real footage. And there was this scene in it um, where a man was like possessed by like an alien demon. So you're already combining two things that terrify me to no end. Here's the thing though, we're watching this movie. I'm getting very upset about all of this. Uh, I won't talk too much about it in case you do decide to watch it. And now I feel like I should finish this movie. I feel like I need to finish this movie. Tell me if I should finish this movie, if you've seen it. I never got resolution. But what happened during this movie is the power went out in the middle of one of these possession scenes. And um, let's just say never really took the time to revisit this film. But I was like, it was like a power flicker where the power went out for a second and then turned back on. And I just took that as a sign that this movie was Satan himself and I could not finish it. And yes, I was up until the sun came up because that's the only time that I could sleep. And I may have cried a few times after that. However, I never finished the film. And then after the next day, taking the time to research it, it's kind of loosely based on something and it's not really true. And the actual, the town of Nome, Alaska is pretty upset that it has this reputation because none of it apparently was true. According to CNN.com, the fourth kind isn't the kind that Nome, Alaska wants around. The horror film tries to say that documented disappearances of Nome residents are the result of alien abductions, and that's just Hollywood hooey, said Mayor Denise Mickles. So here's the thing. Watch the movie. Totally got sold on the fact that this was a real thing. Turns out that it's really not um, true. So maybe I should rewatch it. And my thought was like, maybe if I had made it to the end of the movie, it would have gotten so unrealistic that I would have kind of dealt with it better. But yeah, if you've seen the fourth kind, should I watch that and finish it? Uh, but uh, that movie kind of ruined my life for a while. All right, let's dive into the official list. And we're going to start with movie number one, Wreck. R-E-C, the Spanish version. Okay, I know that clip was in Spanish, but watch this movie in the original language and put subtitles on. And this movie scares me until this day. I won't lie. I watched Wreck 2, the other another Spanish movie a follow-up sequel to this one, and it kind of ruined this one for me. It made it less scary. So if you do watch this and you're like, ah, I'm quite good in my boots, um, watch Wreck 2 and it will almost rectify it. This movie is from 2007. It is a Spanish found footage horror film. And this is the thing, I think found footage films really get me because it kind of blurs that line of like, is it real? And this one combines a lot of things that I love. I'm gonna read you the synopsis. A TV host named Angela and her cinematographer are following the fire service on a call to an apartment building, but the Spanish police seal off the building while these reporters, um, the fire service and some tenants are still left inside. It's a relatively short movie. It only clocks at one hour, 18 minutes, but it is effective. I don't even know how to explain it, the way they build into this movie, what happens in this movie. The stakes are very high and the ending is not something that I expected. So if you're looking for a nitty gritty horror movie that has a little bit of zombie-esque-ness to it and some other dimensions, I highly, highly recommend this. I watched this movie in college for the first time with my then boyfriend, now husband, Mark. And I remember this movie scared me so badly that 
after the movie was over, I was like, well, I need to use the ladies room. I had him come stand outside of the ladies room and talk to me the entire time because I did not want to be alone because this movie actually scared me to a point where I didn't and couldn't handle being in the dark. I think it took about a week for me to get over it. So I think this movie is really scary and I'm going to give it a rating. And I also recently watched this with my Twitch community and it it holds up. I feel like this movie deserves a 9 out of 10. Please get me out of here. Please. It's an indie movie, but it is one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. It has great practical effects. And uh, it'll grab you and won't let go until the end of the movie. And uh, then you might need a, a bathroom buddy for the rest of the week. Or the life, you know, depending on how it affects you. And just because I think it's fun, I'm going to include what the internet ratings are because that's honestly one of my favorite things to do when recording Katie hasn't seen that. To see what the general consensus is and then how I woefully butcher everybody's hopes and dreams. So Rec has a 7.4 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database and 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh, a 4.6 out of 5 on Shudder. That's a new one. A 69 on Metacritic. Nice and 85% of Google users liked this movie. All right, movie number two. This is another Spanish-speaking film. It is called The Orphanage. Un, dos, tres, toca la pared. I know that clip sounds somewhat innocuous and like, I don't know what, yeah, why did Katie pick that clip? If you watch this movie, you will know why I picked that clip. I try really hard to uh, not select things that will have a lot of spoilers if I choose clips for these kind of episodes, but The Orphanage, oh boy, it is a sad movie, but it is a great movie. Another one that you should watch in the original language and just put subtitles on, it is from the year 2007. I think that was like a good time frame for spooky horror movies in Spain, I guess. This movie specifically stuck with me because it's not your typical horror where, yeah, there are scary elements to it, but the story is actually heart-wrenching. And it starts off with this character who has these happy memories of this orphanage that she grew up in. And so she, her husband, and her adopted son buy this place and start to convert it as a way to help sick children. And then her son disappears and let's just say things get a little spooky, but in a very different way than you might think. And I really felt like this movie specifically did scary different. And it's honestly kind of not refreshing because I'm remembering what happens. And I'm like, it's not like, oh, this is like a cool glass of water, but it's not like Saw. It's not like Hostel. It's not like gore and blood and guts and slasher. It's a thought provoking horror movie with some elements that, you know, break your heart along the way. You know, just a little bit of heartbreak. Who doesn't love a little horror and heartbreak? The reason I chose the clip that I did is because I saw this in college as well. And my roommate's boyfriend, um, she and her boyfriend were leaving for the night. So I was going to be at the apartment alone. And, um, you know, uh, uh, her boyfriend decided to do the whole knock, 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 knocking on the wall, kind of like from the clip and just did that, you know, about six times before they left. And so then I was left alone in the in my apartment with the fear of the knock, knock, knock situation. And I won't say more than that, because if you watch the movie, you'll know why I didn't love that he did that. And I was actually incredibly sad and mad at him. I survived, though. I made it through. And now I'm you got to watch it to find out what the heck I'm talking about. I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10. I'm sure it'll all work out, right? It's got to work out. The Orphanage has a 7.4 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, 74 on Metacritic, and 86% of Google users enjoyed The Orphanage. All right. Time for movie number three, The Blair Witch Project. No, get the duck ready. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, there you go.
I feel like most people have heard of the Blair Witch Project. It's not really an unheard of like, ooh, this is an independent movie. It was independent. And then it ruined a lot of lives because they kind of promoted this movie as being like, it's actual footage that they found in the forest. And then we made it into a movie. And I remember this movie came out in 1999 and I felt a vibe that this movie would be scary. I did not see it until I was much older, again, in college. And this, okay, sometimes if I get really, really, really scared, I will cry. And it doesn't happen that often. When this movie ended, I cried because it's just this whole buildup throughout this whole movie. And you're also, it's the found footage. That that aspect really gets me. And it just, it blurs that line between is it fake or is it real? And it feels real. There's just these scary moments peppered throughout it. And that freaking ending is just too much to handle. It's been stuck with me forever since I watched it. When I had to go to bed alone that night, it was a trial. It was a Katie left the light on and that light stayed on all night and I had no shame. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it out. The Blair Witch 2 is actually a pretty decent movie and I think more people should watch that one. I, I mean, it's not it's not incredible. It didn't scare me as much, but the Blair Witch series is freaking horrifying. Essentially, the movie is based about found footage where these three film students travel to a small town and they're trying to document this myth, this myth this legend of the Blair Witch and uh, they go into the woods and let's just say things don't go as planned. If you want to cozy up with a bit of fear and you want to maybe not sleep well, I think the Blair Witch still holds up to this day. I do wonder if I would be as afraid of it watching it now, but there's just something about this movie. Like when I was looking up clips for this, where I'm like, oh, I just don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, it's like the acting in it is is done in a way where you feel it. And so I, I recommend and the Blair Witch, if you want a bit of a fright, you want to feel like you shouldn't be alone in the woods ever after dark. Honestly, the woods are scary. I grew up in New Hampshire. We had a lot of land. It was mostly forest, mostly woods. Anytime I was alone in the woods, it was just very much like a, hmm, you know, I don't know, that cracking of a of a twig or that creak of a tree, probably a monster. And that was during the day. At night, do not, I just don't think being in the woods is a good idea. And this movie only solidified that for me. So it was also filmed in New England and I, well, it's in Maryland. It says it was filmed in Maryland. So it had that same vibe of New England forest where I grew up. And that I think alone also affects how this movie creates a fear in me. What would I give The Blair Witch? I mean, it's not as good as some other horror movies I've seen, but I still think that this movie is a solid 7 out of 10. Don't put babies in the corner. But let's see what the uh, general consensus is around the internet. It has a 6.5 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Have all of these been 86% on Rotten Tomatoes so far? Because if that's the case, that's freaking haunted. Also, 81 on Metacritic and 80% of Google users like The Blair Witch. All right, movie number four, Event Horizon. Billy. Miller? Captain Miller? I've got some problems here. Forever. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated horror films of all time, especially sci-fi horror, which is my favorite. I love sci-fi horror. Event Horizon is directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, who did other movies such as Resident Evil, Alien vs. Predator, and is married to Mila Jovovich, the one who has betrayed me. This movie also stars uh, Sam Neill, Jason Isaacs, Lawrence Fishburne, and uh, an actor I had the biggest crush on in the 90s, and probably still to this day, Jack Noseworthy was in this. And there's a scene with Jack Noseworthy in this that has scarred me for life. And there's times I just like sit down and I'll think of the scene. And I won't tell you which one it is. Maybe if you've seen Event Horizon, you can guess which one. But sometimes I just sit there and I go, oh, baby bear. There's your hint for that one. This movie is about an expedition where a bunch of people are going to find the Event Horizon. It's a spacecraft that vanished years earlier 
but all of a sudden it's back, baby, and they're going to recover it. Dr. Weir, who is played by Sam Neill, helped design the special gravity drive aboard the Event Horizon, which uh, is why he's on this expedition. Uh, things go a certain way and things happen that you can't, I can't tell you about because it'll spoil the movie. But let me tell you, my dad rented this movie when I was way too young to watch it, but I watched about half of it and uh, my family did. Uh, and then my sister, myself and my mom left and um, we didn't finish it. And uh, we, we definitely all maybe uh, needed some time to reevaluate life and also recover from it. But then as an adult, I rewatched this and I love this movie. I honestly think this is my favorite horror movie of all time. It came out in 1999. It's dark. It's gritty. It's got intense themes, but there's just something about this movie that sticks with me in a very visceral way. And visceral is a great way to uh, a visceral and viscera are a very, very good descriptors of Event Horizon. So this movie is from 1997. It comes in at a cool hour. 37 minutes so again I don't know why like it seems like the sweet spot for movies for me are like you know just like an hour and a half to an hour and 40 like you don't need long movies to make them good that's what I that's why I know I complain about movie length all the time but seriously like for a, a good movie you can fit just the right amount of stuff in without it being two and a half hours of just filler crap like I have watched short movies that are more effective than the Oscar winning two and a half hour sagas that sometimes you all make me watch. Uh, that's my tangent though. Watch Event Horizon if you haven't seen it. If you like horror, if you like sci-fi, rent this two nights. Something I should mention now that we're about halfway through the episode, there is a website called doesthedogdie.com, which is absolutely horrible when you really think about the name of that website, but that is a great resource for looking up things that might be triggering to you in films and video games and TV shows. You can go onto this website and look up a variety of things that might be challenging for you to see, like such as animal death, or if gore and viscera are difficult for you. Or if there's smoking even in the movie, you can look up Event Horizon or any of these movies I'm mentioning or any movie at all, and it will tell you if there's something in it that might not be suitable for your viewing pleasure. So keep that in mind, especially when it comes to horror movies. You, you, they go to dark places, and it's a genre that I find can be very beautifully and masterfully put together in film and movie and TV and video games, but sometimes people just get sloppy with it and they just put stuff in there for shock factor. So always be educated about what you consume and if something would be safe for you to consume. So there's my little spiel about that. Event Horizon, I freaking love this movie. I'm mm, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 gravity drives. I think this is the first movie ever I've ever given a 10 out of 10 on. Katie hasn't seen that. That's how much I like this movie. But let's see what the internet has to say about it. It has a 6.7 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 28% on Rotten Tomatoes, 35% mm, over on Metacritic, and 86 of Google users liked this movie. Oof, this one has gotten put through the ringer. I don't believe this was a critic favorite. Apparently, it's not a Rotten Tomato favorite either, but it's a favorite of mine. This is turning into quite a long episode if Katie hasn't seen that. If you haven't realized by now, I love horror and I feel like I can talk a lot about it. And I also seem to have a couple stories about some of these movies. So hopefully this has been a fun episode so far. Let me know if you like it. Because I, I like doing some things a little different every now and then. And uh, I might maybe some Sometimes it's cool to let you know, hey, these are movies I actually like. Do you like them too? Let's move on to movie number five, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. I bet you didn't see that one coming. Lost World was the first PG-13 movie I had ever seen or have ever seen. I remember going to the movies and it was like, we're going to see The Lost World. It is rated PG-13. And I was like, oh, damn, it's happening. And you know what? It's it's y'all know how I feel about uh, Steven Spielberg. His movies are 50 50. OK, he either makes a good movie or he doesn't. And I feel like he did good with this one. Spielberg, I like this one. I like Jurassic Park, too. 
but this one specifically because it has the raptors and obviously T-Rex is a big boy in this one. There's just something about this specific one that that gets me more than the first one ever did. Jeff Goldblum is in this, Julianne Moore. Also, I forgot about this. Vince Vaughn is in this movie. I forgot that Vince Vaughn was in this. There's obviously a lot of dinosaur action in this movie. That's what you expect from a Jurassic Park. And so that's what this movie delivers. Now, I, if I watch this movie now, I would not be afraid, okay? I saw this at an impressionable age. At the time, we were living in this place where I had a skylight directly above my bed. And I remember after we saw this movie, I had a nightmare that I woke up and a T-Rex was looking directly into my skylight. And I've never been the same and I've never looked at a skylight the same. And also, if there was ever any rain on that skylight, oh boy, did it take me back because Spielberg loves rainy dinosaur scenes. And, you know, with a skylight and some rain and you're like a T-Rex could clearly look in on me and probably want to take a chomp. I would been I would have been prime time dino meat. The Lost World Jurassic Park did scare me circa 1997 when this came out. However, I doubt it would scare me now. But tell me, did you ever see a Jurassic Park movie and go, OK, this is actually kind of scary. If you think about it, this is actually kind of scary. And I recommend the, the Jurassic Park movies. Also, Michael Crichton is one of my favorite authors of all time. When he passed away from cancer, I was very sad about it. I love his books and Jurassic Park and The Lost World are based on Michael Crichton books. So based on that alone, go watch these movies. This one doesn't get as high of a rating for me. It's a fun film, but it's not going to change your life. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Avoid velociraptors at all costs. All right, Internet, what do you think about it? 6.6 .6 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database. 53% on Rotten Tomato. That's lower than I would have expected. 59 on Metacritic and 89% of Google users like this movie. I feel like Google users are just kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. It's a movie. I feel like Google users are just very laid back about their movie reviews. And I kind of respect that. Movie number six, The Sixth Sense. Mama? No, dinner is not ready. What are you going to do? You can't hide me anymore! Lenny, you're a terrible husband! Lenny! Look what you made me do! Lenny! So this movie came out and it was very popular. It was M. Night Shyamalan's like first big movie and it kind of made him super famous. And I feel like since then M. Night Shyamalan hasn't been as successful but still makes a lot of movies and a lot of like movies with this expectation of there being a huge twist at the end so tony collette's in this ellie joel osmond bruce willis and donnie Wahlberg. this movie is from 1999 and it scared the crap out of me i probably watched it way too young at the time i was i am around the same age as Haley joel osmond so i had a big crush on him okay sue me um but <laughs> i watched this movie and it's really creepy um it scared me and there's moments throughout this movie that make you unsettled about maybe there being a ghostly presence i feel like this is probably one of the most famous horror movies of all time and i don't want to spoil anything you know i'm not even going to say the most famous line in this movie but if you know what it is you know what it is and this movie scared the crap out of me it's also tragically sad, which I feel like it's been featured for being very like spooky, scary, but also the story's really sad, but I actually really like this movie. I think it's really well done. It made me not want to be awake at night in the dark or, you know, any time of day because ghosts. Um, so I'm going to give the sixth sense seven out of 10. I really hope things work out for this kid. But also, Loki, I'm really curious what the internet thinks about The Sixth Sense because it's albeit it's, it's like a famous movie. So it has an 8.1 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 86% on Rotten Tomato, 64% on Metacritic, and 91% of Google users like this movie. All right. All right. I see you. Movie number seven, Cloverfield. Man, what is going on? Maybe you should have left town a little bit earlier, right? Oh, oh, shit. Go. 
go, 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 go! Cloverfield is a quintessential stressful movie. And when I see clips from it even now today, it gives me like goosebumps. It's a stressful film to watch, but it's just, it's good. You know what I'm saying? DJ Miller's in it. So that part hasn't aged well, but the movie itself, I believe is very effective. I think I've seen the second one and it wasn't very good, but I did like this one. This one came out in the year 2008. It stars Lizzie Kaplan. Uh, let's see. There, I think that's the only face I really recognize besides TJ Miller. I know J.J. Abrams produced it. It was like part of, I think when J.J. Abrams was like becoming a thing, this was one of those movies that became a thing when J.J. Abrams was becoming more and more famous. This movie is about a group of New Yorkers who are enjoying a going away party, but little do they know that they will soon face the most terrifying night of their lives. It's kind of like a creature feature. That's the best way that I can put this. Without spoiling too much, it's yet another found footage film. I just think they work on me. I don't know why, but it is from the perspective of somebody filming the entire night. It's got the shaky cam. It's got jump scares. It's got a lot of things built into it that makes it fun, but also incredibly uncomfortable. I remember I saw this in college. There was, and I've seen a lot, I guess a lot of these I saw in college and they've stuck with me. There was a dollar theater that we used to go to. And they would play movies that had already been released, but you could go see them now. Like the, the college would get them after they were released in theaters. And then we got to watch them for a buck on Thursday nights. So we would go, we went and saw the Cloverfield movie. And I remember walking back to my apartment after again with my then boyfriend, now husband, Mark, and just being like looking around because I had to cross this field to get back to my apartment. And I just remember looking around and being like, okay, I'm really uncomfortable about, you know, how, you know, let's just say. I was on edge. This movie put me on edge. Even watching clips back, I'm like, damn, I kind of want to rewatch this. This one didn't scare me as much as some other films, but it definitely put me on edge when I was watching clips back. It reminded me of that like goosebump. Oof, I don't like this. I'm on, I'm on the edge of my seat kind of movie. So if you're looking for a, you know what, like Godzilla is big right now. Uh, King Kong is big right now. I think that this, this stuff is much better than those. And so I would recommend this one if you're looking for a creature feature. This one may not alter your life in any way, but it is a ride from the start to the end. And so I would give this movie a 7 out of 10. Who has time to film when all of this is going on? And now let's see what the internet says. 7 out of 10 from Internet Movie Database, 78% from Rotten Tomatoes, 64 from Metacritic, and 82% of Google users like this movie. Again, Google, love that you're just going with the punches here. Just kind of going like, you know what? It's a movie. Give it at least an 80. We've arrived at the end of the list. Uh, we are on number eight, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Demons exist whether you believe in them or not. <laughs> Just be careful, Aaron. There are forces surrounding this trial. Emily, can you hear me? Okay, so we know demon possession movies are not my friend, and I do not know what, for lack of a better word, possessed me to watch The Exorcism of Emily Rose, and I hate it. Um, I looked up stuff about this movie. I didn't realize Laura Linney was in this. Also, Jennifer Carpenter plays Emily Rose. So the sister from Dexter is in this. Um, what? Okay. So, oh, and what? Tom Wilkinson is in this as well, who has been in a slew of movies. So essentially, this movie is about a trial of the Reverend Moore, who's played by Tom Wilkinson uh, in a trial about a wrongful death of a girl he thought was demonically possessed. Also, they say that this movie is based on true events or inspired by true events. So anytime that's at the beginning of a movie, I have a hard time with whatever comes next. And it's it follows this trial and Laura Linney plays this attorney and it's this whole thing with flashbacks to what happened to Emily Rose. Needless to say, demon possessions, a ritual gone wrong, 
and um, stuff that will haunt you after you see this movie. There's also a plot point about how the time 3 a.m. is when the bad stuff happens. So after I watched this movie, I believe I just watched this alone when I still live with my parents and I was like, all right, seems like now it's, oh, let's see, time to watch The Exorcism of Emily Rose. 3 a.m. comes up as the haunting hour and I you not. I woke up at 3 a.m. that night and was like, well, this is my time to die. I hate everything. So of course the light was on. I did not sleep well for about a week after I watched this. I swear I woke up at 3 a.m. every goddamn night after I watched this movie. Probably just some weird effect. And also I had to stop checking the time. When I woke up, I was like, you need to stop. You cannot look at the clock. It doesn't matter if it's 3 a.m. We need to get past this. I do not remember that this was a good movie. I don't remember that it was anything besides completely horrifying. And I do wonder if I watched it now, would it affect me? Probably, it's got possession in it. But it's just, it's it scared me. This movie did in fact scare me. I just don't do well with them. We did watch The Exorcist for Katie hasn't seen that. That wasn't as bad. Like I wasn't like staying awake at night. However, this one's more modern and definitely felt a little bit more. I don't remember this being a good movie. So I'm just going to say this one scared me. And because I don't even have any fond memories of this movie, I'm just kind of like, mm -mm, I got to talk about it, but I don't like it. I'm going to give it. Oh boy, uh, a four out of ten. <laughs> You're not going to be sleeping tonight. This, oops. I accidentally left my final form on. I didn't like this movie, but it scared me. And there's now, I know I'm getting YouTube recommendations on the real story behind the exorcism of Emily Rose. And I don't want to know. I don't want any more information on this. I think this is going to make me not sleep tonight. So let's just get this out of the way. It has a 6.7 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, a 44% on Rotten Tomato, 46% on Metacritic, and 86% of Google users like this movie. Google users, do you have any original opinions? I feel like 86 comes up way too much, and now I'm going to start paying attention to that. Thus concludes this episode of eight movies that actually scared me for Katie hasn't seen that. And now I'm going to da, 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 throw some uh, questions back at you. What is a movie that has actually scared you? Give me some recommendations on movies that to this day make you quiver in your boots make you go oh boy i don't like that I, i'd actually like to know i want to see if i can find a movie that will scare me so throw some scary movie recommendations my way let me know if you've seen any of these movies as well tell me if you thought they were scary or if i'm just getting caught up in some hokum pokum thank you all for listening to this episode this one's definitely different than what i normally do but i hope you enjoyed it i had fun talking about these movies and revisiting all of the trauma associated with them but I'm really curious about this subject and I love talking about spooky things. So thank you for listening. Let me know if there's other themed episodes like this of Katie has seen that that you would like to see in the future or here. But we have a segment where I read some of the thoughts that you all shared on a prior episode of Katie hasn't seen that. The last episode was The Rock. And I'm going to share a few thoughts from some of you. On YouTube, Virulent shared, watching these when they've been movies I enjoyed does really make me see them in a new light and why they may not be someone's cup of tea. Thanks for being both entertaining and informative. Thank you, Virulent, for listening. I really want to make a fun podcast for you all that kind of feels like we're just hanging out, chatting about movies, and it makes me really excited to hear that kind of feedback. So thank you so much, Virulent. And another little tidbit from Faulty Jawa, who shared in Discord, I 100% agree that this is absolutely the quintessential action movie. It has everything. Explosions, guns, fire, car chases, a hastily thrown together plot that's completely unrealistic and horrible dialogue and it was made for Nicolas Cage. Adding later on, Faulty said, still one of my favorite parts is seeing Sean Connerly constantly going through the film with this look on his face of why the f*** did I agree to do this movie? And it's kind of perfect in a lot of ways, isn't it? Thank you to Faulty for sharing your thoughts on The Rock. And I look forward to hearing all of your thoughts on future upcoming movies of Katie Hasn't Seen That. Be sure to join Discord, join the conversation. We have a whole channel just where we talk about Katie Hasn't Seen That in movies. Tweet at me on Twitter and also comment on YouTube. 
I love reading your comments. I love interacting with you all. So thank you to everybody who listens to the show. And also, I never do this. But if you enjoy the podcast, if you want to, give it a five-star review on Apple. It not only would help the podcast, but it also gives me some feedback and I get to see what you all think about the show. And I really appreciate it. All right, that's all from me now. And I'm going to leave you all with a wish and a twinkle in my eye of sweet dreams. Nothing but cozy, lovely vibes and definitely not waking up at 3 a.m. Until next time, everybody. Take care. (laughs) If you want to hang out with me more or if you just want to yell at me for my thoughts on a specific movie, I stream over on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash katiepetersplays. Also, feel free to follow and chat with me on Twitter at PlayKatiePlay and on Instagram at katiepetersplays. Music written and performed by Mark Can Do It. Katie Hasn't Seen That is a part of the Geek Generation Network. Until next time, keep your popcorn warm for me.